Hey everyone, it is Gabe from Frame, and in this video, we're gonna dive into an important topic, um, and that is about kind of optimizing your frame for really good performance, because there are a bunch of tips that uh, we have, and we know it's tempting to bring all sorts of things into your frame. Uh, in the past few videos, you know, we've, we've brought in a lot of things, uh, but at a certain point, you might see your frame become a little bit laggy, uh, people that come in on maybe mobile devices or older hardware, it might not perform quite as well. So this video is going to give you a little breakdown on a bunch of different tips and tricks you can use and things to have in mind to keep your frame running smoothly as best you can. Okay, let's dive in. Uh, I've added a few things to our frame here, so I know it looks a little chaotic, but that's kind of the point. Uh, the idea is uh, we're going to go through and I'll show you how these things kind of impact performance and what you can do to mitigate that. All right, now at a high level, you just, you don't want to have too many assets in your frame. Um, this is, I know it's difficult, but some people what they do is they bring in, you know, literally hundreds of images or 3D models or particle systems just tons of assets, and that can become a problem. Um, now, what we recommend instead of doing that is see if you can distribute your assets between different frames and set up links. Uh, you know, in the last video, we showed a frame link, how you can make it easy to move from one frame to another. Uh, so that's one solution. You know, rather than like packing everything into one frame, see if you can spread things out and, and make kind of a a metaverse with different destinations with different assets rather than shoving everything into one. Now, I do want to say you can get the high level sort of list of the assets in your frame because sometimes they're all spread out. You might forget in the frames tab of the sidebar, we have an assets in this frame drop down. And for every asset type, you can see which ones you have in the frame. So I see I've got one image, you know, these two videos, I've got, um, these two models and so forth. So this is actually a quick place. If you know there are assets you want to clear out, you can actually clear them out from here. Uh, and if there's a whole, if you want to clear them all out, you know, you can delete all of a certain asset type. Now I want to point out that if you go to models, we actually give you a little bit of information about the model uh, relative to performance. So this count for the polygons, if a 3D model has a really high polygon count, that means it might impact performance in a negative way. Now, if one of these models is really uh, kind of concerning, then I believe we show a little bit of a red warning. Uh, the goose is only, you know, 2,000 polygon, 1.56 thousand polygons. The astronaut, uh, you know, 7,000, not too bad, and it's got some small textures. But as soon as you've got 3D models that are, you know, 50,000, 100,000, uh, certainly a million polygons, you might run into some trouble. Um, so this is where you can see like, oh, maybe it's this particular model that is causing problems and maybe you delete it and replace it with another one. Okay, lovely. Now, um, a great place to go just to start getting sort of benchmarks on the performance for your frame is in frame settings where you will see a performance rating. And we give you, um, I know this looks alarming because it's red, but this is actually saying, well done. <laughs> we should probably have this be green. But this is saying, look, your environment has 16 assets. It's got this many polygons total, um, 47 draw calls. Draw calls, without getting too in the weeds, uh, the fewer the draw calls, the better. We certainly don't recommend having more than 100. Uh, every material in your frame is gonna be another draw call. Um, and 83 textures, and it lets you know the resolution of those textures. It says, hey, this is probably gonna do okay on most frames. Fair enough. Now you might get other uh, messages here. If we detect that you've got tons of assets, if we detect that you've got a huge poly count, things like that, then we'll call it out here. So this is a great first place to look. We also link here to a blog post that has pretty much a lot of the stuff that I'm gonna say, but in like text form. So you're welcome to, uh, to check this out for sure. I'll put the link in the YouTube video. And then we also give you the count of your FPS or your frames per second. Now your frames per second is kind of a crude metric of how well your frame is performing. Generally speaking, you want it to be 60 or higher. Uh, if you're at 30, things might be okay. You might not notice anything even at 30, but 
once you get below 30, that's when you'll probably actually detect like some noticeable lag or uh, kind of strangeness with the frame. So my FPS is, an, is a pretty ripping hot 80, 90 right now, so I'm, I'm in good shape. Other settings to have in mind, by the way, we have a few kind of advanced settings. If you're doing fancy things with your environments and graphics that if you're paranoid about performance, you'll just want to have off. Like um, if you're trying to get like real time shadows, we actually have a setting for this that works in certain kinds of environments that you can upload and some of our environments, but you'll want to make sure this is off. Um, this enable SSAO, which is screen space ambient occlusion. We don't need to get into it now. The point is you probably want to have this off if you're worried about performance. Um, so keep an eye on those two uh, for sure. And then I also want to say on the topic of 3D models, if you're adding a 3D model, um, and we actually have a new interface for adding this soon that looks a little bit different, but you might try to browse Sketchfab, which is a library of 3D models, and, and this is totally fine. You, you, you really should. Sketchfab is a very cool library of models, but it's really a total grab bag of different models that might be optimized, might not be. They might be really complex, and they might impact performance, but you can put a filter on your search, and if you pick a poly count that's sort of on the lower end, like 0 to 10 is certainly safe, 10 to 50 is safer. Um, you know, but like it's up to you sort of how safe you want to be. Certainly models that are hundreds of thousands of polys or more, they could be problematic. Now we try to optimize them quite a bit so that they're not as problematic uh, by the time they load in frame. But my overall point is uh, use this filter in Sketchfab if you just want to make sure you're bringing in uh, models that aren't too complex that won't impact performance too much. Okay, cool. Now, other things that can impact performance, if you have videos in your frame and they are auto playing, this can certainly impact performance. And um, I generally speaking, if you're really trying to keep an eye on performance, I just don't have a lot of auto playing videos in the frame. You can turn it off auto play like this, which means that when people come in, they actually have to click play in order to see it. Um, videos are a little bit kind of taxing sometimes. So you wanna be cautious with having too many auto playing videos. Okay. Um, now, when I showed you in frame settings this performance rating uh, thing, this is pretty good, but if you want to dive even deeper, uh, what I recommend doing is you can put at the end of your URL uh, question mark debug equals true. This is a really cool little hack that opens up a whole other performance like debugging tool that I just want to have open while we talk about a few other performance tips and tricks. And you'll also be able to see how this tool can help. So when you have debug true in the URL, you get this new button called Open Inspector. And it pulls up this other sidebar that's all about like debugging, uh, you know, seeing what's in your scene uh, and all this stuff. And a lot of it you don't need to know. But the key thing for performance is this little graph button you can click. And this will also show you your FPS and it'll show you things like total mesh count, total lights, your draw calls, uh, and things like that. And it updates like really in real time. So this is where I like to go, you know, maybe I have a theory that this smoke particle system is pretty bad for performance, which it is, by the way. So I'm looking at this thing and I'm gonna go, well, let's see what happens when I delete it. Now, right now my absolute FPS is like 120. But I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this thing and delete, yes. Okay, that's gone. And my absolute FPS went up to 135. So I know that that smoke had somewhat of a negative effect on my performance. Now, did it matter too much? Not necessarily, but all these little things can add up. So you just need to be cautious about really all the assets. This is another one. Uh, this is this rain particle system. And I'm gonna go ahead and delete this keeping an eye on my FPS, uh, my FPS, not my absolute FPS is now like 109. I'm gonna get rid of this rain. And notice it just cranked up to 230. <laughs> so that was a big deal, right? And maybe the high level tip here is this, you need to be cautious with the particle systems and the shaders that you bring into your frame. These can be taxing on performance. But my other tip is that when you've got debug true on, 
gives you the chance to really see in real time the impact uh, that these assets have uh, on performance. Now, another really cool tip, because sometimes you might not need to render all the assets at once in your frame. Uh, so for example, this astronaut right now is rendering for everyone, even if they're really far away from it. Like I'm all the way over here, I can kind of barely see it, but it's rendering and it's, uh, you know, it's in the, uh, it's affecting my performance. If I have the model inside of a voice zone, you can actually set a model to be private to a zone. What that means is that that asset will only appear to people who are inside of the zone in which the asset is residing. This is really powerful because not everyone necessarily needs to see all the assets in your frame. Maybe you only need assets to be seen by people that are in this area. For example, all the assets in this area, you could put a voice zone around this whole area and those assets would only show up uh, as soon as people went into that zone. But if I were all the way over here, those assets wouldn't be rendering and I would gain some performance, uh, which is really cool. And if you wanna set this, by the way, for just every asset to only make it show up for people if they're in the zone that the asset is in, we've got a new frame setting for this. Uh, it's called Restrict All Assets to Zones. And this can be a really big deal for performance if you're in a large frame with lots of assets and you have them in different zones. Okay, really cool. Um, let me see if I've missed any really big ones. You do wanna be cautious with the number, I mentioned video. Uh, streaming screens are the same thing. I mean, if you've got a lot of people sharing their screen, you know, three or four, 10 different streaming screens, that can certainly impact performance. So you wanna keep an eye on that. Uh, now again, for some people, these are kind of non-issues, right? Like I'm on an RTX 3090 uh, GPU, so it actually takes quite a bit to get a frame to where it's lagging for me. So it's, it just depends on uh, the hardware that you're targeting uh, with your audience. Now I do wanna say we also have a, a switch in quick settings to, you can choose to either prioritize visuals or not. Um, prioritize visuals means we'll try to kind of render like you know, the higher quality avatars uh, as best we can. But if you turn this off, then basically what we do is we detect if your FPS, your frames per second is low. And if it is, uh, we might render like simpler versions of the avatars, for example, to try to help your performance not get too much worse. So that's a handy little toggle. Okay, uh, what else have I forgotten? Um, Certainly some environments are more performant than others. This Atlas Hall is very snappy, very performant, but our big auditorium down below is much, much bigger. The, the tip is just pick the environment that you need and make it the size that you need for your interaction. If you're having kind of a small interaction where you don't need that much space, maybe don't pick one of the environments that is like really, really large. It's just a lot of space, a lot of geometry that you might not be leveraging. Okie dokie, um, when you are adding images uh, to a frame, I highly recommend uh, that you compress them first with a tool like Squoosh. Uh, Squoosh is a really quick and easy like image compression tool. I do this for 360 photos and for regular images, by the way, and I compress my MP4 video files before bringing them into frame. So I'll drag something into here and it'll just give you a compressed version of it that you can then uh, bring into frame and that compressed version will load faster because uh, the download size will be smaller and usually you can't notice any difference at all in the, uh, in the visual quality. Okay, sounds great. Uh, let me know if you have any questions about performance optimizations in um, the comments or on our Discord and uh, good luck. I know it's sometimes a bit of a compromise between you know all the cool stuff you want to bring into the frame and then still making sure that it performs okay, but I hope that these tips give you a few good starting points about uh, where you can optimize and uh, things like that. All right, good luck.